video for week 14, we're going to take a look at the concepts of W3C validators and web browsers. Well, let's talk about validating code. In the last video, we got an overview of the World Wide Web Consortium and why it was formed. Well, the World Wide Web Consortium is an excellent free resource that allows you to do something called validating your code. Now, when we talk about code, we'll get in more to that um, in the next video when we begin to look at HTML. But basically, the process of validating your code can be done without any cost to you at, a, at the W3C website. So why would you validate? There's several reasons why you want to take the extra step to validate your code. First of all, for debugging purposes, it's a free resource it's an excellent feature for you to run your code through the W3C validator and actually find out, is there something in the code that um, wasn't web compliant that you can easily fix just by using the validator? So it's great for debugging. It's excellent for quality assurance because you want to create, as a developer, consistent code. And that brings us to the next one, ease of maintenance. So quality assurance and ease of maintenance that allows your code to be checked. It allows it to um, sustain the program that you're building the code for, meaning you know that there's quality behind your code. It also means if you were to ever leave the code and move on to another opportunity, that the next developer can see your code and understand your code and move forward with your code. Um, it's excellent. Validating is excellent for good authoring practices because it's very easy once you start to learn how to code and to program. You, kind of, you can get into some bad habits by taking shortcuts. And so the validator kind of keeps you on track with, hey, this is not web compliant because, and it actually shows you an error message. So it's really good to make sure that you're utilizing good authoring practices. And a final point, it's very, um, it's a very professional thing to do. So for professionalism, you want to validate your code because you're saying, I'm taking the time to say that my code is web compliant. Okay, so where do you validate your code? Again, it's a free resource and you can literally, if you're using Notepad to create your HTML or Dreamweaver, you just literally copy the code and you paste it into their validator, which is found at validator.w3.org and then you run it and it runs through their validation process and it'll produce errors that are that are definitely not web compliant and then they'll give you some caution, um, cautionary errors which they recommend that you fix. Okay, on to the next topic for this video. We're going to talk about the concept of web browsers. In our first video, we um, learned about the term web browser, and that's the software that allows the user to view web pages on the World Wide Web. So we have to have a way for other people to take the web page that we've posted to a web server, they have to be able to see it and to interact with it. And we have the web standards so that we hope that um, what we do post will be consistent across different web browsers, but that's why those standards are so important. So I want to just consider the topic or the question for a second of why are there so many different web browsers? There are so many different web browsers like there are so many different car companies and computer companies and coffee shops. It's just competition and there's an opportunity to make money. There's also a reason that there are so many different web browsers because companies such as Google and Microsoft and Apple their products have a proprietary nature to them. So even though they're following web standards, they're also going to have some things that make them unique. Obviously, if you took, take a look at the Safari browser as opposed to the Google Chrome browser, you're going to see definite differences. And even how they render the web pages are going to be slightly different. But there are some things that they are, are consistent about because of the W3C, because of the World Wide Web Consortium. But there are so many different browsers because there are so many different business opportunities and um, software companies that have the ability to bring those web browsers to the market. So which browsers are most commonly used? The one that will probably come to your mind is the one you use most frequently. If you use Internet Explorer, you're going to think that, or Safari, um, or Google Chrome. W3 Schools and 3 million sites. These are two websites here that I've posted for you that you want to click on and take a look and they'll actually give you stats on which browsers are most commonly used. You want to be aware of that because even if you you are an IE user, you want to make sure that you understand what other browsers are being used even if IE is not the most popular for um, that given period. 
And this brings us to our next point. Which browsers should I design and develop for? And these are uh, the most commonly used ones. Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. You want to develop your code so that they come up fairly consistently across these four types of browsers because that's what folks are using the most. And that's why the World Wide Web Consortium and the web standards are so important because if you validate your code and it comes back as clean code, then you know for the most part that it's going to have a pretty consistent look across these browsers. There's going to be some variation because again, they build proprietary software inside of their own browsers, but you will know that your user's experience will be consistent. And again, that's a professional experience and for your users and it assures quality. So there's a concept called the Web Standards Project. And the Web Standards Project is based on W3C standards and it offers easy to digest and understand content related to web standards. So you definitely want to take a moment and check out the Web Standards Project, especially as you're building your vocabulary um, related to the World Wide Web. There's another concept called acid tests, and in a later video, um, in a later slide, you're going to take a look at the history, watch a video on the history of Internet Explorer, which is really neat because it shows you how their browser has evolved. And the gentleman on the video is going to talk about acid tests, and these are a series of test pages that are written to help browser vendors, such as Microsoft, such as Google, ensure proper support for web standards in their products. So you'll hear him mention different versions of Internet Explorer failed certain acid tests because what the um, browser developer company does is they create these acid tests to test their browser product against the W3C standards, against the web standards, and then once they know it's functioning at that level, then they can add their, um, their niche or their proprietary software or whatever to make it their own, to brand it to be their own. And you can take a look at more information about acid tests at acidtests.org. Okay, so um, you'll definitely want to watch the history of the Internet Explorer video, and you'll want to watch a really neat um, video about Firefox, and you'll see just how the two different companies approach the concept of web browsers.